Well, good afternoon, and good evening, wherever you're from, where you're watching this. My name is Ryan Mwindi, and welcome to SAI TV live coverage of the Riley's Way um, C4K um, um, Awards uh, for the fellows that are being selected. And so I'm going to be your host for uh, the, the duration of the event, and we are going to take a look and listen in to the event and I'll be providing side commentary and insights as we go along. I'm really excited to see uh, some of the work and learn more about uh, the organization and hear more about the projects that were funded by the uh, foundation. So the way this will work, uh, I'll be showcasing, we'll be watching this live stream together. And in fact, if you want to watch it live yourself, you can go to their website later on. Um, but in a nutshell, we are gonna be, uh, the beauty about watching it through, through SAI TV, uh, that we're gonna be providing this commentary as we go along. And what I hope in the future is that we'll have some of the, uh, uh, the awardees, the fellows that were selected to come online with us and, and chat with us and tell us more about the project that they're working on. So uh, yeah, the, the event itself will start in about 10 minutes or so. And so before we get going and watch, learn more about what they are doing, um, let me tell you a little bit about SAI TV. So uh, SAI TV is a civic science uh, focused channel. What we try to do is provide insights uh, from experts and other diverse stakeholders in this space. We bring them here to you to learn more about what they're doing, how they're doing it, and, and everything else in between. And the ultimate goal is to provide actionable insights uh, for founders and funders and other people that are uh, involved in this space. And also, this is our secondary audience, uh, those who are interested in participating in some of these programs as users and consumers. So you get to learn about the newest and the best and the most recent stuff that's coming out in terms of programming that maybe you yourself would wanna participate in or maybe your kids and, and showcasing it to your extended family and friends. And so we wanna be that place you can come to to just be in the know, be uh, abreast, be aware of what's going on out there. So that's what we do here. And it's been a lot of fun talking to founders from around the world in this space. And so I want to show you a little bit of some of those conversations so you can see yourself uh, some of the work that we do as we count down towards the, the C4K uh, celebration from the Riley's Way Foundation. So I will share my screen here and, and show you uh, some of, the, some of the, the, the video here. So bear with me. to see this. Um, but again, welcome to SAI TV. And so I'll be your host again. And as I mentioned, let me show you a little bit about some of the work we're doing. And so here's a quick snippet here. We'll watch this uh, quick overview. It's like the live streaming has begun. So it doesn't matter around here. Ages eight to fourteen, we go on site to the school or the youth organization. You know, STEM education with a place on an inquiry-based approach empowers young children in a way that they become more confident in what they do and how they do it, and they become more independent because they gain, you know, a bunch of skills that are not only at the modern skills level but also intellectual skills. The Peers and Pros Project is something that I really care about deeply because we try to incorporate education and nurturing of new talent every year in a different way. The Peers and Pros Project called Sign Services was a collection of body coverings that serve as canvases for digital prints inspired by biomedical images produced by MIT research labs. We got funded, which is uh, exciting news, um, you know, and being a part of the SAI Fellows Program was really what pushed me to like write this grant and apply. Um, the, the dream of hy Hydrovia. The, the dream of hy hy So I hope you get a feel for that. I encourage you to go to our channel and actually watch um, more of these uh, uh, overviews of some of the conversations that we're having. Um, but again, it's been just so exciting to, to see the conversations and bring them uh, those insights to uh, the viewers here. 
And so today, again, uh, we're celebrating uh, this this launch uh, of these new fellows, um, the the call for kindness uh, winners. Uh, there are forty of them, and and this has been amazing. The the age ranges are thirteen to twenty two, and so the organization will introduce them. And it's a fantastic initiative, really. They get these micro grants, about three thousand uh, dollars, from the foundation, and they they basically provide wraparound support for them over the years. Now, I had a chance to chat with the um, uh, organization um, executive director, uh, Dr. Christine O'Connell, who shared a little bit about what they're doing. And so let's listen in to that conversation for uh, a minute or so. So we are a youth leadership organization and we're, we say we're working to empower the next generation of kind leaders. Everything we do is built around the idea of kindness, empathy, and youth leadership. And uh, we work with, uh, we work with young, young leaders all around the country, ages 13 to 22. So high school and college students um, who have an idea to make the world a better place. And we give them the tools, the funding, as well as the one-on-one -on -one mentoring and peer support to be able to do that. And we're, it's, it's amazing to see the impact they're having. And projects range from you know, tackling social justice issues um, uh, to food insecurity, to, um, to closing the gender gap in STEM education, to um, working in local communities to make sure um, we're closing the tech gap and making sure people have, have, all people have access to computers and technology to be able to advance in today's world. So there's, you know, such a variety of projects we fund and, um, but the, the main core in them is they're all youth led and it's all based around this idea of how do you be a kind leader while, while making a social impact. I, that's that's amazing. And so I think that idea of being a kind leader for social impact, and, and I just love the way that is framed and the intentionality that, that is there to support young people, providing that wraparound support that I mentioned. So if you're joining and watching this later, we are about six minutes away from the uh, live stream going, uh, being opened up uh, from the Riley's Way team. So we are waiting in line here to watch that uh, live stream come about. Now, you may have mentioned, you may have heard Dr. O'Connell mention that uh, they fund various projects uh, from young people, again, from 13 all the way to 22. And so I wanted to tell you a little bit about some of those programs from this year's batch uh, that I found uh, quite intriguing. Uh, there was one, for example, by Shrusti Armrula, and her team uh, title is, can we do something about food waste? Uh, so, and I quote, diverse food waste to compost facilities and rescue food from schools, restaurants, grocery stores for community members facing food insecurity. Another one is Chess Queens on and off the board by Gariari Binog. Uh, increases female participation in chess with a free monthly series of chess sessions for female youth, including a chess tournament. Codology is another one by Neil Chopra team, offering free hands-on community science courses, research and resources that help guide students along their journey to becoming tech industry leaders. I'll give you one more here, Network Her by Gia Michelle Taja Richardson. Uh, a website connecting mentors and meet and mentees in gender marginalized communities through STEM enriching initiative. It's just amazing. In fact, I'll give you one extra one. Uh, this is called Gaia. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. And this is by Lasia La La Acharya. Encourages the world to solve issues with science and creates awareness about food insecurity through research, advocacy, and education. I mean, it's just impressive to see the breadth and the diversity of projects. And that was just a snippet of the 40 that I mentioned uh, that are coming out. Uh, the themes are really quite impressive to just to, to see how they're all structured um, from, again, uh, for our end here, we think about civic science more broadly, but you will see education and empowerment uh, programming. You will see community support and well-being as another category. Uh, environment and sustainability, something that the foundation has focused on exclusively as well, uh, targeted also, uh, importantly. Cultural inter intergenerational exchange, 
Uh, there's also arts and storytelling and communication. I mean, it's just quite impressive with the, uh, with the foundation of being a kind leader. Like, how do you become a kind leader to doing that? Now, we are about three minutes away. I'm your host, Fanyo Mwindi. Thank you for joining us again here. We are watching, I hope you can see on the screen here, uh, waiting for the uh, release um, of of the, the 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 programming for today, um, where we'll be watching together the live stream from the Riley's Way Foundation. Let's have a listen to seeing um, some of the imagery that they're putting up here. Hi everyone, my name is Avery Kelly and I want to welcome you all to the 2023 Riley's Way Call for Kindness. I, oh my gosh, I'm so excited to have each and every one of you join the Riley's Way family. I'm a previous 2022 Call for Kindness fellow with my very own project, The Love Carries On Drive. And to tell you I have learned so much, being a part of the Riley's Way program is a pure understatement. I've met so many wonderful people from mentors to other fellows to staff who have really helped me and all of us be able to move out in this world with our projects. I've also gained so many different experiences and have been able to participate in workshops and retreats. Huh, those retreats, I'm telling you, will be one of the funnest experiences that you have in Rivey's Way. Through Riley's Way, I've joined the DEIA Plus Committee, which is full of diversity, equity, inclusion, and access for youth. I've also become a Riley's Way kindness correspondent, where I write articles for the Riley's Way blog and help make social media posts. So I can explore so many different fields that are outside of the project that I joined Riley's Way with. Something that they say often is when being a part of the Riley's Way family, you honestly are never going to leave. And it's one of the best things ever. 
regardless of how old you are, regardless of what your background is, you can make an impact. And with the help of Riley's Way, you can move out in this world using kindness to help fuel you to do it. So without further ado, I want to introduce to all of you the Riley's Way Executive Director, Dr. Christine O'Connell. Welcome everyone and thank you, Avery. I'm so excited to have all of you here from around the country to welcome in the new class of 2023 Call for Kindness Fellows and also to celebrate the achievements of the outgoing 2022 class. As you know, Riley's Way supports and invests in the next generation of kind leaders, a task that becomes more important every year. We see Riley's Way alumni as future leaders in business, in education, in nonprofits, in policy and government, in the arts, all leading with kindness at their core. And we are all here to celebrate tonight our flagship program, The Call for Kindness, which provides seed funding for social impact projects, one-on-one -on -one project coaching and support, but most importantly, a community of other social impact leaders who care about making a difference in the world and what a difference they're making. Let me tell you now about a few of our fantastic fellows. Jillian and Recovery Meetups from California connects high school students for covering from disordered eating. Dylan and Computers for People have collected, refurbished, and donated 1,400 computers to low-income individuals to promote access to opportunity. Saria from Girls Who Steam is working to empower girls to pursue science careers and has held over 70 events with more than 4,000 students. Anya and Kat of the Colorization Collective in Seattle have connected over 260 artists of color from 16 states and four countries with resources, opportunities, and mentors who look like them, all with the goal of promoting diversity in the art world. And Grayson, who is 22 from Arizona, started a group called Trans in support of trans and non-binary people pursuing STEM careers. And speaking of incredible ideas, let's take a moment and celebrate the work of our 2022 Call for Kindness Fellows, who met for the first time in Washington, D.C. in February at our annual retreat. We heard from inspiring speakers about how to lead both with kindness and power, how to tell their story, how to fundraise, and so much more. They learned from experts, but most importantly, from other alumni and each other. And the powerful community of changemakers and friendships that formed was inspiring. I heard the term life-changing experience over and over again. The weekend proved our mission. Young people have the ideas and passion to change the world. And we just need to bring them together and let the connections and friendships happen. And I can't wait to see what this year brings. And in the spirit of friendship, we're also here tonight to celebrate the birthday of Riley Sandler, who always had kindness and friendship at her core. Let's hear a bit more about Riley from her dad, Ian Sandler, and the co-founder of Riley's Way Foundation. My name's Ian Sandler. I'm Riley's dad, uh, the co-founder of Riley's Way, but really I'm Riley's dad. We started Riley's Way the day she passed. We had no idea what we were going to do when we started Riley's Way. Absolutely none, guys. Riley's headmaster, Mr. Burke, he pushed us to focus on who she was and how she lived. Riley was the person who lit up a room. She was the best friend that anybody could ever ask for. And what Riley loved more than anything in this world was finding different people in her orbit and connecting them. And so we had our purpose. And the winners are, drum roll please, let's all do a little virtual drum roll. The Call for Kindness is a national program, and the idea is we are trying to empower the next generation of kind leaders. You've all got such amazing projects, and whether you're doing this out of Minnesota, or New York, or Charlotte, I mean, it's amazing how many states we have represented. We're here to let you know that you're not alone follow your intuition, everything else will follow through. We work on not just their specific program or project that they're working on, but the underlying skills they need to accelerate them, as well as the connections they get to make so that the future looks a lot brighter than the world is right now. My goals for Riley's Way are so massive, but they're really just a love letter to my daughter, right? They're just, you just want someone you love to to, for people to know who she is. 
and you all let me do that. What I want to do is just say thank you. Thank you for letting me on O'Reilly. Thank you for the work you do and just, just, just please keep going. Kindness is an annual contest that works with young leaders between the ages of 13 to 22 who essentially have an idea or project that they're working on to make the world a better place. We invite young people from across the country to submit newer existing projects that really embody our Riley's Way values of kindness, empathy, connection making, and youth leadership. And we give them the opportunity to both learn valuable leadership skills as well as a grant of $3,000 to put into action for their project. We want to change the face of leadership in this country. So leaders value kindness and empathy. And that is what we're about at our core, empowering and supporting the next generation of kind leaders who want to change the world. All of you, every single person in this room. So once young folks are selected, we do a really big celebration for them, and then what happens is they are enrolled essentially into our leadership development uh, plan for the year. Every good story needs a champion, a challenge, and a change. Every month they come together to learn about topics or skills that can either help them personally or professionally strengthen their projects. Um, and so the skills really range from how do you do public speaking, um, how do you fundraise past Riley's way, and what is it like to be a 15-year-old on LinkedIn, and how do you really use those connections to, to really spread your message. I'm especially excited to announce our special topic this year, environmental justice. This is a topic close to my heart as a former environmental scientist and professor. And this was a topic chosen by our students because they see what's going on in the world right now from climate change to unclean drinking water to a toxic train spill. These environmental problems don't affect every community the same. It's often the most under-resourced communities that are the most affected. And I'm excited to share with you tonight some of the creative solutions our new fellows have come up with to help. Ain't no power like the power of the people because the power of the people won't stop. Say what? Ain't no power like the power of the people because the power of the people won't stop. Give yourselves a round of applause. What excites me particularly about the Call for Kindness is our youth's passion and drive to make the world a better place. It's evident in their projects. I watch them all the time in different spaces, empower one another and learn from each other and build community. And that's something that we really need. What's beautiful about the Call for Kindness is one year's fellows become the next year's judges and they then support and mentor the next group of projects. That's where the excitement comes, is watching these students themselves transform in a year or two to being the brave, amazing leaders that give me hope. Hi everyone, I am TK Kwan. And I am Cipriano Kwan, and we are the Kwan Sisters, writers, creatives, and founders of a new platform, Chew On Something. It is our pleasure to be visionaries, a growing roster of influential change makers who lead with kindness, empathy, and an all-inclusive approach in their various industries. Visionaries use their platforms to bring an increased awareness to Raleigh's Way's work to inspire young people to lead today for a kinder tomorrow. TK and I are passionate about the movement for kindness that young change makers are building today. So without further ado, it's our pleasure to announce some of the 2023 Call for Kind Fellows. First up, Advocates for Autism Mentorship Program from New York, Aster Lit from Minnesota, Florida, Camp Me Fresh from California, Chess Queens on and off the board from Missouri, 
Me too. <laughs> <laughs> Kodology from California, Concourse International from Ohio. And then we have Commerce Kindness Project from Massachusetts, Early Entrepreneurs from New York, Echo Brothers Support Books with Diversity from Florida, Feel the Meals from New York, mm -hmm. <laughs> the Global Youth Economics Forum from New York, Granny Project, from New York. Oh, New York's raining on business. Represent. Yes. <laughs> An idea from Connecticut. Congratulations, everyone, on your incredible accomplishments. We are looking forward to learning more in the changes you will create to make a meaningful impact in the lives of others. Thank you. Thank you. huge family and i'm just so grateful and so glad that i was able to be a part of this family and that i am a continuing member of this family my name is jeremiah west um, and my project is called hotels for the holidays and i'm a call for kindness fellow hotels for the holidays is a three-day two-night stay all expense paid trip for homeless kids and their families so they don't have to spend christmas and wake up on christmas morning in a shelter so we provide gifts um, under the tree, we provide a fully decorated room. Uh, we provide hot meals. Everything is taken care of from A to Z. And we really just want to show love to um, our homeless families and their kids in our communities. Me and my entire family, we all have a heart for helping kids. My dad um, actually used to be homeless. So when his dad passed away, um, he was homeless for a time. And he was kind of bouncing around from um, shelters with his mom to living on floors. Um, at aunts and uncles and relatives' houses. So for our family, this is just a project that's really near and dear to us. So we're working extremely hard year round to make sure that we can provide this experience to as many kids all over the country as possible. The Call for Kindness has been, I think, instrumental in, in our growth and development as a project. The workshops that Call for Kindness provides are next level. I've never seen anything like them. At our last networking call, we had people in legislation, we had um, lawyers, we had journalists. Um, and it was just so cool to be able to interact with each of these people on a personal level um, and then be able to get their advice about our project and how we should move forward. I think kindness is lived out in our work um, in every aspect that we do. When you are kind to other people, you want them to have the absolute best experiences. You don't want them to, you know, settle for less. So I think that's kind of where kindness really comes into our project. It's just like every little detail we try to serve at the absolute highest level because that's what we want ourselves. The Riley's Way community is wonderful. I honestly could not say enough good things about the community, could not put it into words how amazing everyone is. My name is Grayson. My project is Trans Togetherness and Really Awesome Non-Normative Support. And I am a Call for Kindness fellow. I'm trans and my mentor for the project is also trans. We both volunteer for a crisis line, so we were wanting to help our community in other ways outside of the crisis line, and so we brainstormed and we came up with the idea for a support group. The main issue that we're hoping to address is the lack of community and mental health support for um, all trans people around the world. It can be really hard to find any other trans people and often even dangerous, especially for trans people in like rural and remote areas. And we just thought that working with Riley's Way on this would be a fantastic opportunity. All of our meetings are virtual and it's been going super well so far. So we've done three meetings and I would say that our most recent meeting was probably um, the best one yet. It just keeps getting better. And our Discord server um, has just grown in the past month from about 35 to 135 people. So getting that giant community and like having everyone talk in there has just been so amazing. So I think the thing that has made the biggest impact on my project um, is the retreat as a whole. I think just like really feeling like that support from like all of the staff members and getting to see them in person and like hearing so many like nice things about my project from like the other fellows as well as getting like all of the education that we did at the retreat. So all of it, it's just been so helpful. The more people that we can reach and help, the better. We've just really started to like build this community and it's just so amazing.
uh, talk about what you're passionate in, but also gain a new perspective and bring that home to make a bigger impact in your own community. I have friends all over the country now. It's really insane to put into perspective. And I still talk with them to this day. We have this big group chat for the Call for Kindness Fellows. If I were to give advice to the upcoming uh, Call for Kindness Fellows, I would tell them to be yourself. Um, it does sound cliche, but the Rally's Way Foundation picked you for a reason, and they picked your idea. Don't take this experience for granted. You know, get involved as much as possible with Riley's Way and the Call for Kindness program because you're going to benefit a lot from it, not just in the form of financial support, but in emotional support, mental support, and making great connections all around the world. It's absolutely worth it. Joining us live in studio, Avery Kelly, the CEO of her own production company, Inspired Melanin Incorporated. You're 14. Yes, I am 14. Oh, and you're as tall as I am. <laughs> My mom was on Facebook, and she had found that there was this woman that was searching for clothes for foster children. And I had a bunch of extra clothes, so I was like, okay, Avery, you can donate. And by doing that, I did a lot more research, and I learned so much more about kids that are in the foster system, and I learned that when moving from home to home, oftentimes foster children are forced to use trash bags to put their items in. And to me, that just really took me aback because I was like, whoa, this is not okay. So with the Love Carries On Drive, I had gone on Amazon and I created an Amazon wish list and I put together where people would be able to donate through this list duffel bags and luggage tags that would then be delivered to a location that we would take to a local child welfare agency in the city of Chicago, which now we are hoping to expand. The Call for Kindness has made such a huge difference for my project and honestly just me as a person. The Riley's Way Foundation community has just been such a huge help for me in general. I've learned so much more about marketing and being able to create a brand for Love Carries On, but also being able to network for myself, not only with potential companies that may be able to assist with the project, but also with other peers who are around your age and are doing similar things as you to be able to give back to their communities. It's something that I will never take for granted. Kindness lives within the project, that's what the project was built off of, and that's what the project continues off of with the support of the community. Love Carries On is something I don't just want to do at this very time, but I want to be able to continue it even as I get older throughout this year. I want to do as many as possible, so hopefully I'll be able to see some reactions from kids and hopefully I'll be able to make an impact on them. I grew up around an abundance of extracurricular opportunities, and I believe that
My name is Michael and I'm a second year med student. I was a Call for Kindness Fellow three years ago and I'm currently a member of the Youth Advisory Board. I'm so excited to be here today to announce the next group of Call for Kindness Fellows. All right, so here we go. First up, Jupiter Consul Sochess from Minnesota, Legal Studies Institute from New York, Light Up Network from Texas, Love and Sweet Bakery from Washington, My Network Her from New York, Operation Hope Drop from Kentucky, Power of Ponds from Wisconsin, Princess for a Day from South Carolina, Project I Am next up from Illinois, Sci-Fi for All from California, Student World Impact Film Festival from New Jersey, Tata for Now from Florida, Water the Seed from Missouri, Whiskey Bravo from New York, and Wiki Vision from Hawaii. Congratulations, everyone. Um, these are some amazing projects, and I can't wait to learn more about them. If you're looking for some more inspiration, you are in luck. Here is a short video about how Riley's Way has supported the work and passion of young changemakers. always hear all of the amazing stories they have to tell and I'm so thankful to be part of this community. I love that video so much. Hi everyone, I'm Bella from Pennsylvania. I'm a 2021 Call for Kindness Fellow and founder of I Matter, a poetry and art competition I created to provide a forum for youth to process their pain after watching news coverage of the killing of Breonna Taylor and George Floyd. This work is heavy, but it's been an act of love and learning for all involved. Now we'll hear from Charlie. Thanks, Bella. I'm Charlie from New York. I was a 2021 Call for Kindness Fellow, and I'm the founder of the Friendly Fridge Network, which provides public, free-to-take from fridges, stocked with fresh food for anyone who needs it. It's also a place for anyone to give back by adding items to the community fridge. I'm always moved by the spirit of generosity that comes alive when communities come together for good. Each year, Riley's Way offers any previous fellow the opportunity to apply for further funding and support from Riley's Way through these continuation grants. And this year, these winners will also mentor fellows and projects from our new cohort of Call for Kindness Fellows. This is part of what makes Riley's Way so special. You never really graduate, and the support continues. Charlie and I are excited to announce the 2023 continuation grant winners. Project Super Kid at HOBY Maryland, led by Camille, a 2020 fellow. Making Change Blanket Workshop, led by CJ from Georgia.
special topic, environmental justice. And they will be announcing the Eureka Kikuchi Arigato winner. And here are the Sandlers, the co-founders of the Riley's Way Foundation. Thank you, Bella and Charlie. We've made incredible strides in this movement for kindness because of leaders like you and all the young change makers who work every day to make us all better, stronger, and more connected. As Riley's family, this is such an important event for us, and we are so honored to announce the winners for our special topic of environmental justice. This topic was selected by our young change makers for its critical importance and the projects we selected discuss issues related to sustainability, the climate crisis, environmental inequity, and more. And the winners are... Can we do something about food waste from Maryland? So this is a focused um, initiative here on environmental justice. So they're highlighting these projects that were selected for this specific category. And I apologize earlier, it looks like we have lost some audio earlier on and I was uh, commenting, but you're not hearing what I was saying. So um, I will try to summarize some of that uh, in a little bit, but in a nutshell, uh, highlighting some of really some wonderful initiatives that are focused on civic science, that's something that we care about here at SAI TV. And the one I mentioned earlier was from Neil Chopra, 17 uh, in Redwood City, and his project talking about offering free hands-on computer science courses, research and resources that help guide students along their journey to becoming tech industry leaders. Lots of questions that I have for him, I'm sure. And I'm excited to have him and many of the other fellows here with us on SAI TV to talk more about their initiatives. So it's just amazing again to see uh, these projects that are just about to be born and continuing uh, onwards asking questions like who are they collaborating with or what are they looking to collaborate with what are the challenges on the ground what are they learning and what insights can they share with others so with that let's go back into the coverage hi lauren <laughs> i think you're muted lauren of course I am, there but no, I'm not. Um, <laughs> just keeping us all live. Um, thank you so much, Mackenzie, Ian, okay. Brody. Hi, Ruby. Um, am I on screen? Okay, here we are. This is fun. Um, I wanna thank you and say bye. Um, I'm speaking for the whole Riley's Way team when I say this is done out of a labor of love for Riley and for what we do. Um, I wanna thank everyone for being here tonight. It is such a magical space we're in, filled with kind young leaders and all of you supporters. It is a village that grows bigger and stronger every day because of each of you. And we need you to keep showing up, spreading our vision and message of kindness. Invite, invite all your people, your friends, your teachers, your community, everyone to join us because that's how we will grow even bigger and better if you were inspired by the projects and the young leaders you met tonight it's just a beginning i invite each and every one of you to follow us in all the places okay bring out your phone right now find us on instagram if you're not there yet facebook twitter linkedin medium it's right there on the screen. And sign up for our monthly newsletter. You'll see all the chats in our uh, chat as well. I promise you will be filled with inspiring stories of hope and kindness and empathy from around the world. And you'll get wonderful updates from all of our fellows. And you'll be part of our community. We're here because of our dream team, our devoted board, our inspiring youth leaders, and our 70 plus partners from across the country and our generous sponsors. Thank you so much to Wilkie, Farr, and Gallagher, the Sandler family, TLC Starfish Foundation, Catton, A Kinder World Foundation. You help make tonight happen and it's not too late to sponsor us. 
We have no plans of slowing down. We're only gonna continue to get bigger and better. Our staff is growing. Our fellows, we're at 40 and 19 continuation fellows, but we cannot do this work alone. It takes a village to get to this moment. So I need your help. Will you make a small donation? Yes, I'm asking. It's rileysway.org slash donate. No amount is too small or too big. We would love your support right now. Tell everyone because we need you all to be part of this movement. So the sign you're seeing here has the QR code to make it easy. Or if you're on our website, just scroll down. Our team has made it so simple. And I just wanna thank everyone behind the scenes and in front of the camera for your continued support. And it's now my great pleasure to introduce you to Dr. Christine O'Connell, our Executive Director, and Gia Gambino, our Youth Advisory Board Co-Chair, who's been part of every single one of our programs. They are two of the kindest leaders I've ever met and friends. Hi. Hi. Hi, Lauren. Hi, Lauren. Thank you. Hi, Gia. Hi. Hi, everyone. I'm Gia, a 2020 Call for Kindness Fellow and the co-chair of our Youth Advisory Board. Anyone who knows me knows that I love Riley's Way and I'm a proud alumni. Today, I'm pleased to present the inaugural Riley's Way Alumni Award, which will be given annually to a past Call for Kindness Fellow, Youth Leadership Retreat Participant, or Council or Chapter Member, who is a shining example of kind leadership. The recipient of this award exemplifies Riley's Way's core values, which are kindness, empathy, youth leadership, and inclusive community. And now the first ever 2023 Riley's Way Alumni Award goes to Marjorie Cranin. As Marjorie's sister, Rebecca, shared in her nomination, Marjorie demonstrated an ongoing engagement with Riley's Way. In high school, she was a leader on the Hewitt and Twills of Astoria Council and has worked with the Call for Kindness since the beginning by helping organize national outreach and being a judge. Now at Columbia University, Marjorie has continued to be a kind leader, Riley's Way style. She currently helps run a tutoring program and has expanded its service to Cecilia Walker, a charter school in Harlem with whom she first worked with in ninth grade through Riley's Way. Marjorie has found new ways to lead with kindness helping children to thrive academically and emotionally. She also continues to check in with staff and find new ways to support and grow the Riley's Way community. Congratulations, Marjorie. Thank you, Gia, and congratulations, Marjorie, on this well-deserved honor. And I just wanna say a thank you to all of you for joining tonight. We have hundreds of people joining in from around the country. I wrote down some of the some of the locations, we have Mason, Ohio, Atlanta, Georgia, Indiana, Greenville, North Carolina, Miami, Florida, St. Louis, Missouri, Brooklyn, Michigan, Charlotte, North Carolina, Philly, so many places. It's just amazing to see the reach of the call for kindness. Um, I would love for everyone to join me again in congratulating all of the winners tonight and giving them some love in the chat. So I'm privileged to work alongside the most dedicated, hardworking and kind team our staff, our board, our volunteers, our young change makers, and especially our alumni like Gia, um, which is a program we're gonna keep growing. It's just such an honor to be part of this kindness movement with all of you. And our numbers speak for themselves. We have 300 plus Call for Kindness Fellows, including all of you tonight, 40 continuation grant winners, over 350 council and chapter members, 300 plus youth leadership retreat participants and 800 alumni and altogether we've reached hundreds of thousands of people across the globe and i encourage you to go and check out their impact reports there are two of the reports you may have missed this earlier um that I, when i mentioned this uh due to some mic issues but you can go to their website and look at their impact reports where they try to summarize some of their uh, numbers that you just heard from dr o'connell who's uh who, who discussed them Go to our website at www.rileysway.org or callforkindness.org. And whenever we meet these young change makers creating a kinder, more inclusive world, some at just 13 years old, we can't help but think about Riley and this incredible movement of kindness that she inspired. 
So happy birthday, Riley, and congratulations again to all of our winners. Now, please join me in welcoming 2022 fellows, Sydney and Braden of the Be Kind Initiative with a short musical selection from their band in the company of wolves. After the music, we'll come back together to cheer on our new fellows one last time and stay tuned for the full song during our closing. Hey everyone, my name is Brain Grant. Now, as uh, just jumping in here, um, just to again, uh, bring back some of the things that I said earlier um, that may have uh, uh, got, gotten missed. So it's just amazing again, to see these, uh, the launch of these initiatives. Um, I mentioned earlier that I think as Dr. O'Connell mentioned, they're gonna continue to grow um, and I think it's amazing to see how this uh, foundation continues to grow. Uh, will they go international? Who knows? Are they thinking that way? Uh, do you watch my interview with Dr. O'Connell uh, earlier and you can just get some sentiments there. We need to have her back clearly on SAITV. Not only her, but we need to have back some, we need to have uh, some of these um, change agents, I call them, uh, young change agents to join us and tell us more about some of their initiative. So what you're watching now is a song that Dr. O'Connell mentioned that is playing in the background here. And so as they are playing, I wanted to just, again, uh, read off some of these initiatives that are uh, in the civic science realm, if you will. Um, and, and so, you know, the categories, if you missed this earlier that I mentioned, um, it's kind of impressive how they, if you were to cluster them, you know, you have education and, and empowerment, community support and well-being, for example, environment and sustainability, uh, cultural and inter intergenerational exchange, uh, arts and storytelling, just amazing to get that massive distribution uh, that is there. Now here at SAI TV and at SAI, at our, at our, at our institute, uh, we focus on civic science or that connection between science and society and, and so forth. So some of the projects I mentioned earlier, Codology, uh, Gaez, uh, Network Her, and many, many others. And so with that, let's just continue listening in on the coverage. Um, or moments from this evening who inspired you. And in the spirit of our kindness movement, we're calling on all of you to join the call for kindness tonight and commit to doing one kind act this month. Write it in the chat, think about it, write it on social media and use the hashtag call for kindness. I wanna thank you all for coming and celebrating with us today and ask everyone to come back on screen with me tonight who presented, um, who's been, uh, talking tonight and congratulate all of the Call for Kindness fellows one last time. So let's give them all a round of applause. Woo! I want to thank, uh, thank all of you who are tuning in tonight that uh, are watching this to, for being part of our incredible movement of kindness. We are stronger and better because of you. And I wish you all kindness as we sign off Riley's Way style. So use the chat, congratulate everyone, um, and thank you for joining us tonight. Congratulations, all the fellows. Bye. Stay in touch. Yes. Thank you, everyone. Now, you were just listening in there to the closing comments. Um, it's just been amazing to watch these young leaders and their stories. Um, it's just Again, I think, as I mentioned, we need to have them join us here over time until we have a lot of work to do to engage them. Um, uh, the family here, you're seeing uh, the inspiration behind Riley's Way, the stories were really, truly moving. And to know that a foundation is really rooted in that aspect of kindness, right, and building from that uh, central core, I think really provides a really great foundation and avenue uh, for everyone to coalesce around and to be united. And then, as I mentioned earlier, the idea of community, um, we heard a lot about the idea of community from all these young change ag agents. So it's not a, just about giving money for them, Catholic funding, but providing a sense that you are in this together, we are in this together. That when they go through challenges and of course running an organization, starting something is not easy. In fact, it is truly difficult and I commend them truly for their courage in trying to do this work, um, they know that they're not alone. And I think that's really, truly important for them to remember that, that they're not alone and that they can reach out uh, to the next fellow, to each other um, and help one another to, to, to navigate uh, the, the, the landscape that is out there. So what you're seeing here again, where the applicants are coming from, 
um, we we have uh, we are going to get to work to try to engage some of these um, uh, fellows who are in the civic science realm over the next uh, year uh, or two, and think we won't stop, and we look forward to joining the next celebration and other celebrations that the foundation has um, to, to allow us. And then with that, I do want to thank the Riley's Way Foundation team for allowing us to, to live stream their, their event and, and really just sharing and allowing us to share these insights with others. And now our audiences, again, are very diverse, but uh, primarily other leaders and funders and founders of initiatives in civic science. So what we hope again is to provide that platform to bring together these ideas, to visualize them, to to showcase them, and and provide insight right from the those that are on the ground doing the work. And I think there's no other better person than than them. And our goal is to ask them the timely questions that allows us to get those insights uh, in a timely manner, so that uh, whether it's a collaboration, whether it's a funder that realizes that that's a fantastic project to follow up on. That is what we're trying to do and, and really being that source of uh, news and information in this space in a way that um, uh, really the, that others are not necessarily doing at the moment. And so that is our motivation. We want to just be that bridge, uh, the connecting bridge uh, that, that is there. So um, we continue to watch here the the, the photos and, and insights. Um, they are a nonprofit like any other, so they rely their work on donations and sponsors. Um, there's a massive sponsors, sponsored list that they have that is there, but it's never enough. Never enough. So take a look about how sponsorship works. Go to the, go to the website and learn more about, about that as well. You may have mentioned earlier, you may have seen earlier, that funding is a definitely a big challenge and they have these targeted workshops in terms of how to do that marketing and so forth. It's amazing that they're getting that education so early, so, so, so early. Uh, we at SAI, do, we have a similar fellows program, but we're much uh, sort of further along uh, individuals. And, and so uh, to get early started, I'm absolutely amazing. Some numbers there, hopefully you saw um, uh, regarding the Riley's Way um, impact uh, spectrum. So do go to their website. They do have those impact reports that you can take a look and see them. Again, it's amazing to to see, see to see this. Now, as that plays here, I'm going to minimize the screen um, and and continue to track the the coverage there. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, so we at SAI TV do this um, uh, on a you know broad basis. We try to provide this coverage, um, and so I want to show you some of those insights. Um, uh, so some of those conversations that are uh, take, that have taken place before, and so here is um, the video. Video we started watching at the beginning. Hydrovia is to entirely eliminate food insecurity and to empower impoverished people, uh, and the goal of that is to give them more time, less worries, and it, it's hopefully going to serve as a bouncing pad for further development in these communities. Well, that's a pretty interesting question. I think that our main focus, purpose, this work is to like give the people the um, like the power to empower their birds because Colombia is the number one uh, country in, uh, in terms of uh, bird species. Here. Hello, so, hello, one, okay. two, three. Can you hear me? Hi there, of course, along the way, bloopers are usually lots of bloopers. In fact, today we just had quite a few bloopers already, and here are some. <laughs> I look forward to telling you more about some of the, yeah, the and it's never fun looking and hearing yourself so definitely today my name is Fernando Wendy and welcome to SAI TV uh, the one that they uh, by experienced science doing a little bit of science with a scientist from Colombia who also hates like them they see inspiration, they see a role model, a different role but model. But I think another really big barrier that exists is that if you're trying to publish in a non-native language um, for an academic paper, the level of English that you would need is so much higher than um, anything else. 
So to be able to translate something from your native language um, to a non-native language, such as English, um, takes, first of all, a lot of time and effort that could be spent doing your own research. For example, if you're a graduate student or a postdoc or even a faculty member. Um, and it also costs a couple of thousand dollars to translate. Tell ourselves that we're making jefas, and jefas meaning boss in Spanish, right? So we're trying to make um, women like leaders and within the tech industry. So uh, I focus on uh, mostly the programming side. So uh, I'm building, we currently just launched a mentorship uh, program. Uh, so we have a structure that is in, in cohort. To consider um, as a nonprofit leader or as a business leader, um, is you have to be mindful with a understanding what's happening in the economy. So you have to always be in alignment with what is happening um, um, economically now and what is being projected for the future. You are bridging the gap in two ways. The first one is to encourage the community to feel part of the scientific process. That means we go to the field with them. So as you saw earlier, so we focus on civic science projects. So these are projects that are connecting people and science directly and, and how you do that, the diverse ways to do that. And, and so what you're watching here are some of these conversations that we're having with these founders and we ask them the hard questions. We ask them those questions that others want to know about, right? How are you thinking about impact? Um, and we actually asked this of Dr. Christine O'Connell, who is the director of the Riley's Way Foundation. And again, we will do the same thing, asking these hard questions to the fellows. And again, our goal is to understand how they're thinking. What insights are they getting from the work that they're doing? that can help other founders and leaders and funders who are thinking about um, supporting, investing in, and committing time to the space. So it's just been amazing. Again, the conversations are very, very rich and we are just tapping um, into the space here. Uh, so let's continue listening in. By maximizing meaningful uh, relationships with women STEM mentors. Even more important, is when people uh, and this was from uh, Bogota, Colombia. They say that they are teachers from outside Bogota in a small region, and they and they they are connected with the Arab Initiative. Sun, 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 so this is just sun, a background song here sun, uh, that we're playing. Sun. So. One of the things that we also tried to do more recently, and, and I think uh, as we engage the Riley's Way Foundation fellows, um, we will we'll engage them in, in diverse ways. I think we always ask our guests, um, you know, what are some insights that you want to share, right? And uh, them also responding to new things that are happening on the field, some change that's taking place um, the economy, for example, how are they navigating that? So again, as I mentioned earlier, timely questions so that we can get timely insights, right? So that on the go, um, week on week, we can provide that an assessment. So I wanted to give a special plug in here to a recent, uh, in fact, this last week, uh, this was an engagement with a, a, a science communicator and the whole interview was in Spanish. And so this is uh, Victoria Gonzalez, a special correspondent who talked with Alessandro on his work really more broadly, teaching science topics uh, with humor. And again, that was completely... In eh, aparte, hago investigación en comunicación científica porque estoy tratando de balancear eh, la, la divulgación científica. Now, of course, if you're worried, I won't return, you won't be able to understand this. Uh, there is, of course, uh, subtitles in English that you can uh, turn on and, and, and listen uh, and learn from them. So uh, with that, we are getting close to the end of our coverage. It's been absolutely fantastic to um, watch the Rally's Way team. Um, they're now offline, as you see here, uh, which concludes um, our uh, coverage for this year. And as I mentioned earlier, uh, this is just the opening, um, the opening for us. We hope we can continue to provide uh, coverage for this for uh, other events are taking place. We have traveled as far as Bogota. We've gone to Philly for conferences. And we hope that, for example, this event, maybe in the future, it's in person. Uh, we can be there in person to engage and, and get some insights as we are there, for example. Um, and so with that, um, it's been absolutely wonderful to, to share this um, 
this time with you and I hope that you will join us in our next uh, coverage. Okay. Thank you so much, everybody.